Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Leo Ryan, and right now I am here at the historic Hollywood Heritage Museum. This is the barn where the very first Hollywood movie was made. That's right, Cecil B. DeMille and the Squaw Man, and there's a lot of history that we're going to get into tonight. We have people that were in the movies, we have people that just work in the movies, we have just fans of the movies. This is 100 years of Universal City, and today we get to enjoy the Hollywood Heritage Museum. This room right here was Cecil B. DeMille's office, originally the way that he had it set up over 100 years ago. If you have the opportunity to come check this out, you get to see some of these pictures of some of the people, the history. There's a whole library and books, and you can find out more about Cecil B. DeMille and Jesse Lasky right here. Where are you from originally? Reno, Nevada. Ooh, Reno, Nevada. <laughs> My great-great-grandfather drove stagecoach during the gold rush, so I'm a Western girl. Well, I, I was born in Oakland, but okay. when I was four, I moved to Hollywood. Arkansas. From Arkansas. What are some, what's some advice that you could give to the younger generation of movie makers that are coming out here that want to pursue it? Well, that's interesting, because I ran a film actors boot camp in Idaho for about eight years, saying, it's getting the job. We all know you're actors. We all know you're good at it. How do you get the job? If you're a working actor, that's the most important thing. If you're living in Sioux City, Iowa, doing community theater and raising a family, that's important. But it's a business. It's show business. And I think knowing, read the contracts, know where you think you should be, where do you fit. You can't play everything to everybody. As an actor in college, you want to do all that. But John Wayne can't play Danny Kaye, no matter what, you know? All I can say is when an opportunity comes, take advantage of it. That's what we did. That's why we ended up moving to Hollywood. <laughs> right, right, right. There you heard it. I think it's, if you have a dream, it's, it's good to chase it. I mean, it's good to go and, and uh, give yourself over to it. You know, I really do. You need to keep the stability inside of you. You need to keep who you really are and don't get carried away with the press and who, how important you are. What's your soul? If you go back years ago and look at the actors, the Jimmy Stewart's and the Gregory Peck's and whatever, there was a solid person there. It wasn't all about the $500 purses and getting on entertainment tonight and all that stuff. It was more the, the chore and the creativity that was your job. We've gotten carried away with press a little bit. Go past that. Go to the core of who the person is and what their, what their talent is. And we've got some fabulous people coming up. Right. Yeah. yeah, we do. Tell us about this. This is something I have that... absolutely no idea. It's from a Gilligan's Island episode and bamboo bikes, I think. I have no idea. Okay. I think what it is, the prop men were having fantasies. <laughs> they made washing machines. They made cars. They made exercise bicycles. They were great. And I am blessed. After Gilligan's Island, I thought, I'm going to play that same character my whole life. So I went back to stage. I'm about to go out in, in uh, December. We're booking me for... Driving Miss Daisy. I was a graduate of Stevens College, all women, University of Washington, with a theater major. And my decision was either New York or LA. I don't sing, so I thought New York is sort of out. And I came back here. The first thing I did was a play with Leon Ames and Mercedes McCambridge. This is the scene from Showboat. I was nine years old. I march in with all these children. That's me there. They've lit me up more than the others. And then I run over to Alan Jones, and uh, he hugs me, and then we go over and we talk, and then he sings make-believe to me. The important thing is that they had, Oscar Hammerstein had to write special lyrics so that he could sing to me, so he changed it to... Those were written by Oscar Hammerstein so he could sing to me. Julie Adams here, and, and you were uh, in The Creature from the Black Lagoon, is that correct? Definitely, I am in it. Yeah. Yes, I am. Yes, yeah. I am. <laughs> right, I was in Hansel and Gretel, Yeah. and the milk spilled too soon, and I ad-libbed and saved the day, and I got, I got, you know, oh my gosh, I'm... <laughs> Pretty good here. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I could go off the top. I was in about the third grade and realized 
she found her calling. There you and, have it. Uh, yep. So um, I guess the star business. was That's born that day, yeah. though nobody knew it for about another 15 or 20 years. <laughs> there it is. But she, uh, she lived her dream, and I think that's the book, you know, Lucky Southern Star, Reflections in the Black Lagoon. Well, we get to, play, like kids, you know, you get to play act, you know, you get to pretend. Yeah. And that's fun. All right, so right now we're here with Jane. Captain Dave was one of my favorite people of God ever played with uh, Gregory Peck. I just loved him. And he was one of my closest friends ever. Wow, well, that sounds like an amazing story. I have had the most wonderful, interesting life of anyone I know. <laughs> I am so blessed. Mama always thought it would be fun to be in show business. She never would sing or dance. She could only play the piano with one finger. That's how I learned all my songs. I did have tap dancing lessons at the Georgia. And I had my own radio show for three and a half to six <laughs> That's a bit, but thank you very much. That's so nice. God bless all of you. I hope to meet some of you someday. Have a good life and have fun. It's a great world we live in. Enjoy it. Bye-bye. Thanks again for watching. This is Leo Ryan here from In Hollywood TV, signing off from the Hollywood Heritage Museum. What an amazing opportunity that I had to get to meet and talk to some of the people that are just they were there. They're part of the history of filmmaking uh, here in Hollywood and in show business as we know it today. Uh, if you are interested in being involved in the movie industry, then this is definitely something that you should learn about and have an appreciation for and a respect because it's just a different feeling knowing how much hard work has gone into these movies that were made before our times. Everything that's going on now is very digital and uh, we are in a time now where it's just a lot easier and mass produced but uh, back then it was not easy to make and this is this barn right here holds a lot of character and a lot of interesting uh, history behind it. And there's only one way to experience that, and that's to come here. It's right off of Highland. It's really easy to find, uh, right across from the Hollywood Bowl. And if you come and take a look at it, you will get an experience that you cannot explain right here through this digital camera. Thank you guys so much for watching In Hollywood TV. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share with all of your friends who you think would be interested in learning about Hollywood. Give me goodbye. Give me a smile to cheer me on my way. Give me a rose to keep love burning Just for remembering